Foods plant in the city's Gattaca district. Police are still looking for another man who got away. The Liebermount Hotel trial has ended after the owner pleaded guilty to breaches of fire regulations. Five people died in a fire at the hotel in Blackpool last year. The owner, Alistair Cunningham, was fined £2,800. His wife, Janice, was acquitted on all charges. Two young girls have died in a fire in Southport. The children, aged three and four, were upstairs in a house in Loxley Road when the fire broke out. They've been named as four-year-old Sarah Ann Mosley and three-year-old Amy Brookfield, who lived next door. Fire officers are still trying to establish what started the blaze. The Walt Disney Ice Show <coughs> at Liverpool's Albert Dock was allowed to go ahead tonight, only 15 minutes before the performance was due to start. Last night's audience was turned away because the council were unhappy about the safety of the show tent at King's Dock. Well, tonight, the council allowed organisers to fill the tent to half its capacity. There'll be a further inspection tomorrow. And finally, a reminder that the lines are still open if you want to take part in the Northwest Tonight telephone vote on fluoridation. If you want to vote yes to fluoridation, telephone 0898 991182. That's 0898 991182 for a yes vote. If you want to vote no to fluoridation, telephone 0898 991183. That's 0898 991183. Our calls cost five pence wherever you're ringing from, but when you do ring, please allow a little time for the call to connect. That's it for now. More news from around the region tomorrow morning at five minutes to seven. Good evening. Well, a rough spell of weather coming up over the next few days. We call it unsettled. You call it very wet and often very windy with severe gales from time to time. Now, everything hinges really on a deep area of low pressure now to the south of Iceland. Lots of isobars in its circulation and every now and again these weather fronts swinging across the country bringing bands of quite heavy rain. Another one showing its teeth for the middle of the day tomorrow, way down there to the southwest. But as we're getting a bit closer, you can see by tomorrow tea time, it'll be just down there off Cornwall. Severe gale force or even storm force winds then getting into the south of the country. And those strong winds moving further north across the British Isles in the following 12 to 24 hours. Now it's pretty windy at the moment down in the south. There's plenty of rain around as well, right the way down through Scotland, down through much of northern England, Wales and into central and southern parts. It's not uh, raining just yet in the far east there of England or Scotland, but the rain's soon pushing across. But eventually, I think by the end of the night, the rain confined to those more northeastern parts of Scotland, but still a fair crop of blustery showers feeding into these southern and western coasts. Quite a strong wind for a while. Then that wind just moderating for a time, but picking up again in the west as we go through towards tomorrow morning. Now, temperatures tonight really quite academic, actually. About 8 to 10, the minimum temperature on offer. So tomorrow morning, for the first hour or two, starting off pretty wet, it'll be that far northeastern part of Scotland. There'll be a fair crop of blustery showers still around those western and southern coasts as well. But there'll be some sunshine in between times. But the best of the sunshine in those places which are sheltered from this fairly stiff southwesterly wind. But going through towards the middle of the day, we'll find those showers breaking out once again in more inland parts. And during the afternoon, perhaps the showers becoming fewer and further between for a while before more cloud, thick cloud and a strengthening wind brings more rain back into these more southwestern parts as we go through Friday afternoon. Now, temperatures tomorrow are going to feel pretty low, I think, with the uh, fairly stiff wind. 13 to 15, probably the best on offer. That's the upper 50s Fahrenheit. Maybe over there in East Anglia up to 16, 61 for a time in the sunshine if you avoid the showers. But the wind's picking up all the while, up to severe gale force or even storm force winds in the south by tomorrow evening. And that's it from me for now. Ben's over. Derek. In view of all the press and media speculation, I am preparing a statement which I shall make tomorrow. What did you do? Well, it was pretty standard fantasy stuff, really. The present rumour and innuendo is extremely hurtful, not only to my wife and family, but also to my parliamentary colleagues and, indeed, my party. You promised me I'd never hear another word from either of them. Never, ever again. I don't see this as a damage control exercise, Derek, so much as a decisive, definitive... Counterattack. Screen One exposes Bloor, MP, Sunday at five past nine on BBC One. On BBC Two now, in a change to the published programme, 40 Minutes visits a street in West London where the residents, although next door to each other, live worlds apart. Here on One in Half an Hour, Peter Sisson's guests on Question Time are Jonathan Porritt, Anne Leslie and MPs Paul Berteng and Linda Chalker. That's after we've been for a spin with Captain Blackadder.